Hi all, it's PJ and welcome to the video supplement for the handy bag. If you'd like to follow along, the project is available for purchase from my website. The download contains the project sheet, the pattern, and the full written instructions, and a link to the project is in the description field below. The project sheet has the bag measurements, volume, all the supplies and material lists, and the yardage required for the project. Step one, preparing the bag body. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is lay up your topper material and your ripstop nylon and make sure that they're the same width. This is basically um, a fat quarter these dimensions that I'm using for the sample are not quite a fat quarter because they wouldn't all fit on the screen. So this is kind of just a made up size. But in essence, you would wanna make sure your widths are the same from here to here. And if they're not, then trim up whichever one you need to trim to make them both the same width. All right, um, the other thing, and when we um, go to do the topper, lay out the topper, you'll see why I'm recommending not using um, a fabric that has a direction to it, you are gonna be best to use something that's got an all over print, non-directional. All right, so uh, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take your rip stop and you're gonna put it wrong sides together. Uh, a lot of rip stop really doesn't have a right and a wrong side. Sometimes there's one side that is shinier than the other. So you just need to determine which side you want for your right or your wrong side. If you happen to have a coated rip stop, I would consider the coated to be the inside. So you've got this set up with wrong sides together. And you're going to, this is my salvage edge. So I, I actually, my salvage was kind of pulling in a little bit, so I trimmed it off to make sure that it would lay all flat. And then I've just surged this edge with the standard four thread overlock, just from end to end. So that's step one. Step two, cutting the parts. So this is my topper fabric and I've got it folded in half once. So there's a fold up here and then I'm folding it in half again. So basically you're just folding this into quarters like this. Then you've got your pattern. On the print, you're gonna put the red line all the way up to the top folds here. And then there's folds on this side as well. If your fat quarter happens to be longer than your pattern, you can just extend this. That just means that you'll have a little bit more of your topper fabric showing on your bag. So you're gonna pin or clip this in place and then you're gonna cut out along the curved edges, leaving the folds intact. This is cutting the bag. So I've got my bag piece with the one edge serge. So I'm gonna fold this hot dog wise, matching up my two seams here. I'm gonna turn it this way, and then I'm gonna take that same pattern that I used for my topper. Here's my fold, here's my side seams. This time, I'm gonna put the red line. Pick this up and see if I can get this into the camera a little bit better. The red line is gonna go at the seam, not at the very end. Not like this, but like this. There we go. So you don't want it all the way down to here. You do actually want it to sit here. So it will be positioned like this. You're gonna trim just the curved parts. You do not wanna trim this bit. That's the bottom of your bag. I'm gonna go cut that. I'll be right back. All right, so I've cut out my two curved sides. We're gonna set up to stitch the bag. Step three, stitching the bag. So we've still got our seams out here, and this is with the wrong sides together. So I'm gonna turn this 
so that my right sides are now together. And your tops are gonna look like this. And you're gonna align all of your cut edges and either clip or pin those into place because we're setting up here to do the box bottom and the seams. I'm actually gonna put these pins so that they're not in my seams so they don't get caught. All right, you might wanna so put a pin in the middle too just to hold everything nice and secure. All right, so I've got that pinned into place. The next part is to make the box bottom. So I'm gonna turn this this way and the actual size of the box bottom is gonna be in your full written instructions. You're gonna measure up and then basically you're just gonna fold this up, making sure that each side is even. And that's gonna be your box bottom. On this made up size, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. All right, so I'm gonna clip these into place and I'll be ready to stitch. I've got my box bottom clipped into place. Whatever distance this is, your box bottom is gonna end up being twice that width. I'm gonna to go to the serger and I'm gonna sew my seams. We're at the serger and I'm set up for just a standard four thread overlock. I am on about a three and a half inch stitch length and the widest width and my knife is unlocked. So we're gonna start sewing, serging from the box bottom and go up to the top. And I'm gonna start this with what I call a clean start and it's a nice way um, to start your seams so you don't have to worry about um, threading your tails in when you get done. So I've got a thread tail here. I'm gonna raise my needles to the highest position and I'm gonna pull my thread tail to the front. And then I'm gonna put my fabric in and move it up to the needles. And the right side is just at the knife. You're just using the knife as a guide. You're really not trimming. And I'm gonna hold this thread tail in the front. And when I stitch, I'm just gonna surge right over the top of that. And that's gonna tie in my tail. I won't have to worry about threading anything in after the fact. And I'm gonna have a nice secure start. You can go three or four inches and then you can just cut that off. So I'm now just gonna come down and finish stitching this seam. this end you can just trim off this. When you do the other side you're going to sew because you want to start again from the base and sew this direction so you can start with a clean start. You're going to be turning this over so your your fold is actually going to be on the other side. So once again I raise up my presser foot, I lift my needles to the highest position and I bring my thread tails to the front. I just place my fabric up to the needles. Make sure everything's in line and I'm just gonna run over this tail. Oops, kinda got my fabric stuck there, there we go. And then just trim that off. There are your nicely finished ends. Step four, the topper seams. So with right sides together, you're just gonna sew the side seams with a standard four thread overlock. Step number five, attaching the topper to the bag. So you're gonna insert the topper into the bag with the wrong side of the topper to the right side of the bag. So, my bag is inside out and my topper is inside out. 
you are going to just insert this in here. So here's the wrong side of my topper. This is the right side of my bag. I know it sounds strange. It'll make sense here in a minute. I like to align my side seams first, and I'm just gonna clip those into place. And I'm just pushing one seam to one side and the other seam to the other side. That will just help to reduce the bulk. So one seam is going that way and one seam is going this way. So once you have your sides clipped in, I like to go up to the top of what kind of looks like an armhole and position that so what's gonna happen here is the reason that you did that very first step with the wrong sides together is so that you'll end up with a finished seam on the inside of your bag, like that. This is kind of transparent ripstop, so it's a little harder to see. You're just gonna clip all of this into place. I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back. So you've got your topper all clipped up to your bag like this. So on the straps, I like to clip at the centers and then go down to the straight. If for some reason your um, bag and your topper don't exactly line up, when you go to serge this section, it's on the curve and it's the bias, so it's gonna be pretty forgiving. So you can kind of make up for any discrepancies at this section right here because it will kind of just gently pull into shape. All right, we're gonna go over to the serger and serge basically the armholes and the neck, even though that's really not what they are, but that's what they look like. Okay, so we're at the serger. I have set my machine up for a three thread overlock. So I have only my right needle and my stitch selector is on B. I am at my narrowest width, and my stitch length is about one and a half to two. So you, you basically want a nice narrow hem here without actually doing a rolled hem. So I am gonna start at basically the seam. I'm just gonna start just past the seam. And you wanna be able to get in here cleanly. So once again, I'm just gonna hold my thread tails and I'm gonna wiggle my flywheel to release the stitches off of the stitch finger so that when I put this in, it, the side of it won't cave in. Your part's gonna be a little bit bigger than this. You're gonna have a little bit more room to work with. So I am doing what I call sewing inside of the circle this way so that you don't have to, if you were to sew this going in the other direction this way, you would always wonder where that other part is. This way, at least the other side's up on the top. So I'm gonna take that clip out because it's kind of getting in the way. And then I'm gonna position this and I'm making sure both of my layers are together and I'm gonna position this at, just at the edge of my knife. Now, I'm gonna take a couple of stitches just to get that anchored. So here is the trick to sewing on a curve. You're gently, while keeping your layers together, you gently wanna pull this area straight to the knife, gently. You don't wanna really tug on it. You're kind of just gently pulling it straight. And then when you get to the straight, it should be no problem. So we're just gonna go all the way around this. And you just wanna make sure that your two layers are together, that you're catching both layers. And 
And again, I'm just gently pulling this straight. So we're getting back around to where we started. And again, just gently pulling straight. So I am gonna go until I trim off my tail there. Now I'm gonna lock my knife. I'm just gonna lift up and make sure that's positioned correctly. And then I'm gonna sew back to where I started. And again, you just wanna watch, you've got marks on your um, foot. They're hard to see on the clear foot, but you've got a mark here for your right needle, which is what I've got in. You basically want that mark to run right along here, and then you'll know that you're stitching right on top. So go past where you started by about an inch, and then this is how you stop cleanly on uh, in the round. So I'm gonna raise my needle up to the highest position. I'm gonna lift up my presser foot. I'm gently gonna pull on my needle thread just a little bit to give it a little bit of slack. I can then pull this straight back and out of the way, put your foot back down, and then just gently stitch off. And then you can just trim this right at the edge. This is just standard um, serger cone, so that's not gonna unravel and go anywhere. And there you've got your nice stop and start. So you're gonna do that to all of the other openings. So I've got all my curved seams finished off and my bag is still basically inside out, but that's fine because that's how it should be. So you're now going to take, so this is setting up for uh, step six, finishing the top edge. So while this is still inside out, you are going to flatten out this top bit and I start at the center because it's easy to get to. And you are going to fold the bag here at the edge of your topper. Can you see that? I'm just going to place a clip there to hold it in place. And then I'm going to go to this side and do the same thing. So I'm just folding this with this flat. Once you've got those two edges, you can kind of pull it open like this, and the rest of this should sit down where it's supposed to. So then you're just gonna match up your seams. I'm just gonna reach in here and push that to one side. And again, just push one of the seams to one side and the other to the other side and then clip at the side seams. And then do the same for this side. So I'm kind of gently pulling on this to make sure that those are the same, they should be the same circumference. Like that. So we're now actually gonna, I'm just, kind of reaching in and grabbing the bag. And we wanna turn this this way. So now your bag is actually right side out, but your topper is kind of sitting inside. So this is the orientation that we're gonna sew this seam, because we're gonna sew again inside. All right, going over to the serger, and we'll stitch down the topper edge and we're gonna use a two thread flat lock wide for this. We're at the serger and I have my serger set up for a two thread flat lock wide. I have a 9014 top stitch needle in the left position and I've got two spools of Sulky 12 weight, um, one for the upper looper, one for the lower looper. The lower looper is what's actually gonna show on the outside of your bag. Refer to your quick reference threading guide for setting up for the two thread flat lock wide. 
I've got my positions set the widest width and the longest length and my knife is locked. All right, so I'm going to start stitching this at what basically is the side seam. So I'm raising my needle to the top position and releasing the stitches from the stitch finger so that I can get in here and start nice and clean. I'm just going to position the the fold and the edge of your fabric are should be at the same spot. So I'm positioning that where the knife would be cutting if the knife were engaged. So you're still just using your knife as a guide. And then I'm just going to gently stitch around. And I'm just trying to make sure that my layers are staying together. If one of your layers ended up being slightly longer than the other, if you need to take a little tuck to adjust for that, I would do it at the side seams. It's going to show the least there. When you get back to the start, take your tail and just trim that. And you're going to sew past where you started by about an inch. And then lift up your foot, release your thread, put your foot back down, and then just gently stitch off. On this, I would leave a long tail. We'll feed that in after the fact. Alright, so we've got our bottom end finished, and it looks like that. The inside is going to look like this. So, you are now going to open out your bag, just open the bottom bit of this. So now, to get this to lie flat, you kind of need to position this and get it going in the right direction for it to all lay flat. So I have got this. So there's kind of a little flap here. Can you see that? Then I'm going to lay this on the table and with the top side flapping over the bottom, you're going to gently pull this out. And that will ensure that your stitches are sitting where they're supposed to be sitting. So just do that all the way around. All right. So there's your little bag. Here is your box bottom. It will just fold in. And for this project, this is the perfect kind of box bottom to have because it will always just stay in position. Your little tail, you're just going to take a large eyed blunt tip needle and feed that in. All right. Step seven, the elastic. So I just tacked um, my elastic at the center. And I did this just on a regular sewing machine and I just use um, a three-step zigzag. I started a little bit before the elastic and ended after the elastic. This happens to be fold over elastic and there's a right and a wrong side to this, meaning that there's a shiny side and a not shiny side. So when I attached my elastic, I did it with what I would consider the right sides together. And you'll see why, because when you have the finished bag, your elastic actually gets kind of turned inside out. Okay. So step eight, folding the bag. You're going to put this 
on a table with the elastic side on the downside. Fold in your edge kind of so that it's even with this. And then this side is gonna then fold over so that it's roughly centered here with your elastic. And then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So just fold that edge in. And once you fold this in and connect the elastic, if you just leave it all rolled up for a day or so, your creases will kind of work themselves in and then the next time you go to fold it, it'll be much easier. So I folded this edge in straight with here and then all the way over to the center. So your handle should be in the center like this now. So then fold your handles down and you should be able to see your elastic here. And then I fold my bottom up. Your bag is gonna be much longer because this is my just little made up size. So then I fold this over the handles and then just roll this up. And when you get up here to the end, here's your elastic and then just flip that around and your elastic will lay flat and then there's your pretty side on the outside. So there's your completed handy bag. They're really perfect for travel. So this is an example using um, the wave stitch at the edge, which I think is actually really fun and pretty. This is a perfect example of where to use your wave stitch. That's it for the project. Thanks. We'll see you next time.